who are the early fantasy baseball sleepers that you should target? It's sleeper season, and I got you covered. I'm Chris Welsh. Here at Fantasy Pros, I have got 10 sleeper names that you need to put on your list, do a little studying, so you can draft them for their big potential return. Now, before I get into my top 10, are you ready to make a bold statement in your fantasy baseball league? Well, then show your league mates that you mean business with the bling ring from Trophy Smack and stand out as the true champion that you are. We've teamed up with Trophy Smack to bring you an epic giveaway that will take your league celebrations to the next level. To be eligible, all you got to do, subscribe to the Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel, your ultimate source for fantasy baseball insights and updates, and leave a comment on any of our videos. That's it. The best part, we'll be announcing the lucky winner right here on the channel, so don't forget to turn on those notifications. That way, you'll be the first to know when new episodes drop and when it's time to claim your prize. All right, sleeper time. Let's go. Coming in at number 10, Minnesota Twins starting pitcher, Chris Paddock. After returning from elbow surgery, Paddock only pitched a few games in 2023, but his fastball was at an all-time high at 95.5 miles per hour. And though it was only a few starts, his fastball and changeup both had career-high whiff rates. He had 16 strikeouts in 10 innings with only two walks and looked like the Paddock of old. In drafts, he's free. And the Twins have produced quite a few bounce back pitching stories. Get Chris Paddock if you want to fill out the back end of your rotation. And that fastball rate continues. The strikeouts will as well. And Chris Paddock is going to go from a waiver wire pickup to a mid round win. Coming in at number nine, we've got Boston Red Sox outfielder Jaron Duran. Now, Duran hit 295, stole 24 bases in just over 100 games in 2023. It was pretty great. But Duran's biggest adjustment was improving his hard hit percentage by over 8% up to 46% on that hard hit rate. His EV50, which is a baseball savant stat that shows the top 50% of the hardest hit balls, he had the 60th best in the entire league. That might not sound, but the 60th best is a big number, especially for Jaron Duran and the amount of playing time he got. Now, projections love Duran. Derek Cardi, the creator of the Bat X projection, which was rated as the best individual projection system over the last couple years, puts him at almost 15 homers and 30 stolen bases. With his improved batting profile and an open spot to keep the job for the year, his ADP outside the top 150 might seem really silly at the end of 2024. Coming in at number eight, we've got Los Angeles Angels shortstop Zach Neto. Not often can you find 20 homers and 10 stolen base combos outside the top 250. Neto would have fallen just short if he paced out over 160 games last year. ATC, Ariel Cohen's projection, which was rated the number one as an aggregate system, the number one most accurate, and the bat X, the most accurate of an individual projection system, both see him just short of a 20 home run, 10 stolen base season, but in only 130 games. So though Neto struggled hitting for average, both systems see a 20 plus point batting average improvement. He's also projected for a positive dollar return on the bat X projections on the auction calculator on fan graphs. Something that's kind of hard to do at the end of your draft, getting a positive dollar return. He's a great deep league middle infield target, but if he reaches what most of the projections see him doing, he's going to push a top 100 return. Don't sleep on Zach Neto. Coming in at number seven, we've got Minnesota Twins starting pitcher, not Chris Paddock, Bailey Ober. We're back at it. Bailey Ober, he isn't flashy, got a 91 mile per hour fastball, but in 2023, he saw career high whiff percentage on that pitch at 27.7%, which is high for a fastball. He changes pitch mix from a second primary pitch of a slider to a changeup, and that changeup made everything better and more effective. He had a 25% K percentage with an only 5% walk rate. Also to go along with that, he had a sub 3.5 ERA, which was supported by an expected ERA that was just a tiny bit higher at 3.6. He really was like a George Kirby light Eats innings, is effective, and low walks. Every rotation can use that. Where Kirby is a third or fourth round pick, and it deserved so, by the way, 
Ober is going outside the top 150 in drafts. If his innings jump beyond the 144 he pitched last year and went to say 180 or 190, Ober could put up top 20 starting pitcher numbers. He's a must target in later rounds and is bound to return big value. Coming in at number six is Chicago Cubs first baseman, Michael Bush. Michael Bush is finally free from the Dodgers. And according to the Cubs, he is said to be a primary first baseman for the team. Now, even if Bellinger does re-sign, that doesn't mean a ton has to change for Bush's playing time. So just remember that. And that's what makes him so intriguing. Between his short major stint last year and the minors over the last two years, Bush has hit a combined 50 home runs across all levels in those two years. This past year in AAA, he also hit a career best 323 with a sub 20% strikeout rate. Chicago currently has the sixth best ballpark factor for left-handed hitters. Now, throw in two others in the division that are also in the top eight of best places to hit for lefties. Bush, with a real shot at everyday playing time, could legitimately put up 25 plus homers. And his ADP, 399. That is 350 plus, truly making him a player that is being slept on. Number five on our sleeper list, we've got Milwaukee Brewers first baseman, Reese Hoskins. We lost Hoskins for 2023, so some of his overall projection is hard to gauge. What we do know is he is a season removed from hitting 30 home runs. His hard hit percentage, barrel percentage, and EVs, they were all in line with where he had been in the past, for the most part. And he had three straight years of a batting average between 244 and 246. You can't do this often, but when looking at the bat X projections, we're going to make a comparison. And Hoskins is within about 90 to 95 percent of production of a very buzzy popular name who I almost put on this list, Spencer Torkelson at the position. The homers are within two and the batting average has both hitting 240 or in the 240s. The difference is 80 spots of draft capital. Now, the hitter friendly environment of Milwaukee is favorable to his power. And though projections are like putting him there, he can hit 30 homers this year. And the only reason, by the way, are the projected games played, which tend to be about under 120. Now, if Hoskin plays 140, there will be 30 home runs with it. All of this currently going post 200. First base can fall off, but Hoskins has a shot at being in a much higher conversation of value. Coming in at number four, New York Yankees starting pitcher Carlos Redon. Though not all projections agree on the major impact of Radon this year, most are positive, Steamer being the most aggressive. They've got Radon at almost 200 strikeouts and a little over a 3.5 ERA. According to the auction calculator on fan graphs using Steamer projections, Radon has the 14th highest dollar earned return for starting pitchers. His results, they were poor last year after signing his big deal with the Yankees, but there are still big positives that are driving these positive projections. He's healthy again. His fastball lost no velo, and he was a year removed from a 33% K percentage that he had held for two straight years. Redon's kind of an easy sleeper to identify. They'll most likely, though, be no gray area. He'll either continue that bad end to last year and is cooked, or he's going to return a top 20 SP that he was in previous years. Early NFBC ADP has him outside the top 170. Coming in at number three is Baltimore Orioles shortstop Jackson Holiday. All the rookie talk is the other Jackson, Churio, after he signed his deal, where he's now got an ADP of around 140. Or Wyatt Langford with the Texas Rangers, potentially him breaking camp. His ADP, around 150. But almost 50 picks later, you can have Jackson Holiday. Now, he hasn't signed a deal yet, getting rid of potential manipulation, roster manipulation, or a concrete word from the Orioles that they are going to allow him to break camp and have the gig. But here's what we do know. There's a path for him to start at shortstop currently on opening day. Roster Resource also has him there. Last season, he hit all four levels of the Orioles minor leagues, ending at AAA. That's big. On the season, he put up 12 homers, 24 stolen bases across those four levels, and was only one of eight minor league players to walk over 100 times. Of those eight, he was one of only two to hit 300 and have double digit homers, and he was the only teenager to complete that feat. He's not as flashy as some of those other prospects, but Holiday's floor as a prospect combined with the upside could make him a top 50 
fantasy option in 2024. Coming in at number two, we've got Tampa Bay Rays starting pitcher Zach Eflin. Like many with that Tampa magic, Eflin became a new pitcher once the Rays got a hold of him. He pitched 177 innings in 2023 with a 3.5 ERA and a 9.5 K per nine. He had an expected ERA, which was better at 3.02, which was in the top 7 percentile of the league, according to Baseball Savant. Last year, he threw a cutter as his third main pitch, using it 26% of the time, and making him a more effective strikeout option. With the increased swinging strike rate, ability to eat innings, and a career-low 3.4% walk rate, it's easy to want him as a core piece of your rotation. What jumps out, though, if we go and use ATC projections, Mario Cohen's, he is projected as the 11th best dollar return of starting pitchers. Projected better than the likes of Zach Gallen, Yamamoto, and Framber Valdez, and many more, by the way. He sits right around the 180p range, but he could push the limits of a top 10 starting pitcher this year in Tampa. And finally coming in at number one is Pittsburgh Pirates shortstop, O'Neill Cruz. My favorite pick that I'm taking in every draft, and I don't care what type of build. Now, here's the cheap, maybe lame comp, but where Ellie De La Cruz is going inside the top 30, O'Neill Cruz is sitting around 75 overall. Now, the reason I say it might be lame or cheap is because it's kind of like the easy comparison many are making. It's done, though, because of physical similarities and gameplay. Cruz might have more present power, where Ellie seems to be a bit more hyper aggressive as a base stealer. O'Neill lost a year to a foot injury, but the big difference we have with him is we saw the changes that needed to be made. He ended 2022 lowering his strikeout rate, and then he kicked back 2023 before getting hurt doing the same. Ellie struggled kind of wildly with strikeouts, and we've seen little improvement yet, and that's, of course, like due to sample size. Now, Ellie's launch angle is a big change he's going to have to make to become a bigger impact bat, where O'Neill has it, the launch angle, over 10 to go with good hard hit numbers and better barrel percentages. The bat X can be harsh on players like these, especially Ellie. Well, O'Neill Cruz is projected as just about a 25 homer, 25 stolen base guy, and within a $1 value of Ellie De La Cruz. He is my favorite sleeper so far this year. Are you ready to make a bold statement in your fantasy baseball league? Well, then show your league mates you mean business with the Bling Ring from Trophy Smack and stand out as the true champion that you are. We've teamed up with Trophy Smack to bring you an epic giveaway that will take your league celebrations to the next level. To be eligible, all you've got to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel, your ultimate source for fantasy baseball insights and updates, and leave a comment on any of our videos. And that is it. The best part, we'll be announcing the lucky winner right here on the channel, so don't forget to turn on those notifications. That way, you'll be the first to know when new episodes drop and when it's time to claim your prize. Guess what, friends? Those are your sleepers. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel, not just for prizes, but just like for us, for me, for Joe, for all the guys. You can also find me on Twitter at is at the Welsh if you want to talk more. And I will talk to you next time right here on the Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel. Bye, friends.